Imagine standing in front of a mirror. What you see reflects who you are at this very moment. Now, think deeper, beyond the surface, and consider who you can become. This reflection is not merely physical. It embodies your dreams, aspirations, and the untapped potential within you. It's about the ongoing dialogue between your present self and your potential self, encapsulating the essence of the battle within. Each day, we face choices that either affirm our current state or nudge us toward the person we aspire to be. It's a profound internal struggle that dictates the course of our lives. Yet, how often do we pause to reflect on this? How frequently do we take a step back to evaluate the direction in which we are heading or whether we are true to our deepest ambitions? The importance of self-improvement cannot be overstated. It is not merely about acquiring new skills or expanding our knowledge base. It is about transforming our character and enhancing our lives in a meaningful way. It's about bridging the gap between where we stand today and where we see ourselves in the future. Yes, this journey is fraught with challenges and setbacks, but it is also filled with immense possibilities and opportunities for growth. This journey of self-improvement starts with internal reflection. It requires us to ask ourselves some tough questions. Are we content with where we are? Are we moving in the direction that leads to fulfillment and success? This introspection is not a one-time test, but a continuous process essential for growth. It's about being honest with oneself about shortcomings and missteps, and equally about recognizing and celebrating our strengths and victories. Remember, this battle is not fought on distant shores. It is waged in the corridors of our minds, in the choices we make every day, and in the way we perceive ourselves and our capabilities. This isn't just about self-improvement, it's about self-transformation. It's a journey that demands persistence, resilience, and an enduring commitment to our goals. Let us then step forward with a clear vision of who we are and a vibrant hope for who we can be. This path is not easy. It is strewn with the temptation to remain within the comfort of the familiar. Yet, the rewards of pushing through, of truly battling against our present limitations, are profound and life-altering. Let us carry with us the understanding that every step taken in self-awareness and improvement is a stepping stone towards realizing our fullest potential. Understanding the current version of ourselves becomes not just beneficial, but crucial. This understanding begins with self-awareness, which is the bedrock of personal growth and self-improvement. It is about being acutely aware of our thoughts, emotions, beliefs, and behaviors. Self-awareness allows us to understand why we do what we do the triggers behind our behaviors, and the emotions that drive our decisions. While self-awareness is the starting point, it is the common traits that often hold us back which need our attention. Traits such as fear, complacency, and negative self-talk are not just hurdles. They are the chains that bind us to our current state, preventing us from moving toward that greater version of ourselves. Overcoming these limitations begins with changing our internal narratives and involves stepping out of comfort zones facing our fears, and replacing self-doubt with self-affirmation. As we reflect on the transformative power of personal growth, let us remember that each step toward understanding and improving our current selves lays the groundwork for the next. It's about setting the stage for personal growth and preparing ourselves for the journey ahead. Let's carry this understanding forward, recognizing that while the path may be fraught with challenges, it is also ripe with opportunity. These are not merely abstract ideals but practical steps that we can apply to make significant changes in our lives. First, let us delve into the fundamental aspect of continuous learning. The world around us is ever-evolving, and to keep pace, we must foster a mindset of perpetual learning. This means not only expanding our knowledge in areas of professional expertise, but also broadening our understanding of the world. Continuous learning involves reading extensively, attending workshops, seminars, and conferences, and seeking feedback from mentors and peers. It is about being curious and inquisitive, always questioning and seeking to understand more deeply. Consider the story of Michael, a manager in a technology firm. Michael dedicated at least an hour each day to reading industry publications, books on leadership, and attending online courses. This habit did not just keep him updated with the latest trends but it also equipped him with innovative strategies to enhance his team's performance. Michael's commitment to learning turned him into a respected leader admired by his colleagues and sought after by other companies. Alongside continuous learning, the formation of good habits plays a critical role in personal development. Habits are the building blocks of our daily lives. 
Positive habits such as planning your day, exercising regularly, or dedicating time for reflection can significantly enhance productivity and well-being. The key is consistency. When we repeat an action enough times, it becomes a part of us, embedded in our daily routines. To illustrate, let's look at Emma, who struggled with time management. By implementing a simple habit of reviewing her tasks each morning and prioritizing them, she found herself more organized and less stressed. Over time, this habit of planning her day every morning helped Emma become more efficient and proactive in her tasks, allowing her to take on higher responsibilities. Persistence is another cornerstone of self-improvement. The path to achieving our goals is rarely smooth. It is fraught with challenges and setbacks. Persistence is what keeps us going despite these hurdles. It's about maintaining our efforts and commitment even when the results are not immediately visible. Persistence means pushing forward one step at a time, keeping our eyes on the goal even when the road gets tough. Resilience and adaptability go hand in hand with persistence. Life is unpredictable. Changes and challenges, whether personal, professional, or global, require us to be resilient and adaptable. Resilience is our ability to bounce back from setbacks, to learn from failures rather than be crushed by them. Adaptability is about adjusting our strategies and approaches in response to changing circumstances. Together, these qualities ensure that when faced with a roadblock, we find a way around it or sometimes a new and better path. Sarah, an entrepreneur, experienced a significant business failure. However, instead of giving up, he used the experience as a learning opportunity. She adapted her business model, addressed the shortcomings, and relaunched her business with a new strategy that eventually led to greater success. Sarah's story is a testament to the power of resilience and adaptability. Furthermore, building a network of supportive relationships can enhance our resilience. These relationships provide not only emotional support but also diverse perspectives that can help us adapt and thrive amidst challenges. Engaging with a community of like-minded individuals creates an environment where we can share knowledge, learn from others' experiences, and support each other in our growth journeys. Remember that the journey of self-improvement is ongoing. There is no final destination, as each goal achieved sets the stage for the next challenge. Our learning never stops, our habits continuously evolve, our persistence is constantly tested, and our resilience and adaptability are forever crucial. Each of these steps is interlinked, supporting and enhancing the others. As we progress, these practices become deeply ingrained in our very being, propelling us toward not just achieving our goals but living a more fulfilled and meaningful life. Now, let us turn our attention to how we can overcome internal obstacles that often impede our progress. Understanding these barriers is crucial as we continue our path to personal development and achieving our fullest potential. In the intricate process of self-improvement, we must acknowledge and address the internal obstacles that often deter us from achieving our true potential. Among these are procrastination, fear of failure, and self-doubt, common challenges that many of us face. Understanding these internal conflicts and adopting strategies to overcome them is essential for personal growth and success. Procrastination, the thief of time, often tricks us into delaying tasks that we find daunting or unpleasant. This delay not only impacts our productivity but also adds to our stress, creating a vicious cycle that can be hard to break. To combat procrastination, it's crucial to understand its root causes, which often include fear of failure and overwhelming tasks. One effective strategy is the five-minute takeoff, where you commit to engaging in a task for just five minutes. Often, starting is the hardest part, and once begun, the work carries its momentum. Another technique is to break larger tasks into smaller, more manageable parts. This makes the task less daunting and gives a sense of accomplishment as each small part is completed. Setting clear deadlines and creating a supportive work environment can also help minimize procrastination. Fear of failure is another significant barrier that holds us back. It stifles innovation and discourages us from taking the risk necessary for growth. Overcoming this fear starts with changing our perspective on failure. Instead of seeing failure as a negative endpoint, we can view it as a stepping stone to success. Each failure offers valuable lessons that can drive our personal and professional growth. One way to manage the fear of failure is through visualization techniques, envisioning success instead of dwelling on the possibility of failure. Positive affirmations can also reinforce self-belief and counteract the paralyzing effects of fear. 
Moreover, setting realistic expectations and preparing thoroughly for tasks can reduce anxiety about potential outcomes. Self-doubt, closely linked to the fear of failure, often undermines our confidence and limits our potential. To overcome self-doubt, it is helpful to maintain a record of our successes, no matter how small. This record can serve as a tangible reminder of our capabilities when doubt creeps in. Seeking feedback from trusted mentors or peers can also provide an extra internal perspective, helping us to see our efforts and achievements more clearly. Engaging regularly in activities that strengthen self-efficacy, such as taking on new challenges and learning new skills, can also gradually build confidence and reduce self-doubt. Maintaining a growth mindset, believing that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work, is key. The stories of individuals who have overcome these internal battles are both inspiring and instructive. Consider the story of Anna, who struggled with severe procrastination and self-doubt during her university years. Despite her intelligence, the fear of not living up to expectations led her to delay her thesis work repeatedly. It was not until she sought the help of a mentor who introduced her to the technique of breaking down tasks and focusing on one small step at a time that she was able to move forward gradually. Anna regained her confidence, completed her thesis with distinction, and went on to a successful career in research. Dot. Then there is Mark, a young entrepreneur whose fear of failure nearly prevented him from starting his own business. Haunted by the possibility of losing his investment and disappointing those he cared about, Mark was stuck in a state of inaction. However, through attending workshops on resilience and engaging with other entrepreneurs, he learned to see failure as a normal part of the entrepreneurial journey. This shift in mindset allowed him to take the plunge and launch a startup, which turned out to be highly successful. As we reflect on these narratives, let us remember that the journey to overcoming internal obstacles is continuous. Each day offers a new opportunity to confront our fears, challenge our doubts, and move beyond procrastination. By adopting practical strategies and drawing inspiration from those who have triumphed over their internal struggles, we equip ourselves with the tools necessary to forge ahead. This realization empowers us to continue striving toward not only meeting but exceeding our potential. Now, let us look at how maintaining momentum in our efforts and staying committed to our path can help us sustain our growth and achieve long-lasting success. Building on the foundation of overcoming internal obstacles, it becomes crucial to maintain momentum in our personal development journey. Sustaining growth and avoiding regression into less productive habits is a challenge that requires strategic planning and unwavering commitment. As we advance, the techniques and structures we put in place to support our growth play a vital role in ensuring that we stay on track. One effective strategy for maintaining momentum is the establishment of accountability structures. This could involve partnering with accountability partners, mentors, or joining a peer support group. An accountability partner is someone who shares similar goals and with whom you regularly review progress, set future objectives, and discuss challenges. This partnership can be incredibly motivating, making it much harder to fall back into old habits when someone is actively observing your progress and pushing you forward. Mentors, on the other hand, bring wisdom, experience, and often an invaluable network of contacts. They provide guidance, advice, and a broader perspective that can help you navigate challenges more effectively. Their role in your life can be transformative, as they not only encourage you but also challenge your thinking and decision-making processes, thereby fostering your growth and resilience. For continuous self-assessment, regular reflection on your progress is essential. This might involve weekly reviews of your goals and the strategies you've employed to meet them. Self-assessment helps identify what is working and what is not, allowing you to adjust your strategies and stay aligned with your long-term objectives. It encourages a proactive approach to personal development and ensures that your actions continuously resonate with your ultimate goals. Moreover, staying motivated over the long term is often one of the most challenging aspects of personal development. To keep the motivational fire burning, setting clear, measurable, and challenging goals is crucial. These goals should be aligned with your deepest values and interests to ensure they ignite passion and drive within you. Regularly reminding yourself of the reasons behind your goals, the benefits they'll bring, and the progress you've already made can also keep you motivated. Visualizing the outcomes of your success is another powerful motivator. When you can clearly picture achieving your goals, the path to reaching them becomes more tangible and compelling. 
This visualization should be detailed, including not only the end results, but also the emotions you anticipate feeling once you've achieved your goals. The stories of those who have successfully maintained long-term motivation can also serve as powerful examples. Consider the story of Julia, a graphic designer who aspired to start her own agency. Despite early challenges, she kept her vision clear and regularly revisited her business plan to remind herself of her goals. She set up monthly meetings with a mentor who helped her refine her strategies and introduced her to potential clients. Julia's clear focus on her end goal, supported by her mentor and her own continuous planning and reassessment, eventually led to the successful launch and growth of her business. Another key technique is to celebrate small victories along the way. These celebrations reinforce positive behavior and remind you that success is a journey, not a destination. Each small victory builds your confidence and reaffirms your belief in your ability to achieve your goals. Flexibility and adaptability are also critical. As you grow and evolve, your goals, interests, and circumstances might change. Being open to reassessing and adjusting your goals accordingly ensures that your personal development journey remains relevant and aligned with your changing life context. Lastly, integrating your personal development activities into your daily routine can help make self-improvement a natural part of your life. Whether it's listening to motivational podcasts on your commute, reading in your field every evening, or dedicating time each morning to meditate and plan your day, these activities can enhance your growth without feeling like an additional burden. By incorporating these elements into your life, you ensure that your journey of growth remains steady and directed towards your ultimate vision of success. Let us carry forward these strategies as we reflect on the overall journey we've embarked upon. Each step taken, from understanding ourselves to continuously growing and overcoming barriers, builds upon the last, creating a comprehensive path toward personal excellence and fulfillment. Remember that each moment of self-improvement contributes to building a resilient, adaptable, and deeply fulfilled individual capable of achieving extraordinary things. As we near the close of our discussion today, it is vital to reflect on the ground we have covered and the pathways we have charted toward personal growth and self-improvement. We started by understanding the powerful interplay between our current selves and our potential selves, highlighting the importance of self-awareness and the challenges posed by internal conflicts such as fear, procrastination, and self-doubt. We then ventured into the realm of envisioning our best selves, embracing the transformative power of setting realistic yet ambitious goals and utilizing visualization to see not only what we aspire to become but also the steps necessary to achieve that vision. By breaking down larger goals into manageable tasks, we pave the way for achievable successes that accumulate, building momentum and reinforcing our journey. We explored the essential strategies for maintaining this momentum through continuous learning, habit formation, and the development of resilience and adaptability. Each of these strategies is crucial for sustained growth, helping us to remain committed to our path even in the face of adversity or changing circumstances. We also discussed the significance of having a support system like accountability partners and mentors, who provide not only guidance and encouragement but also the necessary feedback that challenges us to keep moving forward. And importantly, we highlighted the need for continuous self-assessment as a tool for introspection and recalibration, ensuring that our actions align with our deepest values and long-term objectives. Now, as we stand at the precipice of new beginnings, it is essential to embrace this journey of self-discovery and self-improvement as a continuous evolving process. It is not a destination at which one arrives, but a perpetual path of becoming, becoming better, wiser, more resilient, and more attuned to the possibilities that life offers. Thus, I challenge each of you today. Commit to this journey, commit to taking the first step, then another, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem. Commit to embracing the challenges as opportunities for growth and to viewing setbacks as lessons rather than failures. Engage with your goals daily, nurture your ambitions, strive to exceed your own expectations. Let this commitment begin now, from this moment. Make a pledge to yourself that you will pursue growth every day, that you will remain steadfast in the face of challenges, and that you will celebrate every small victory along the way. Write down your goals, speak them aloud, share them with a mentor and revisit them often. Remember that the quality of your journey is determined not just by the goals you achieve but by the lessons learned and the character built along the way. Each step forward, each obstacle overcome enriches your story and deepens your resilience.
So, let us move forward with courage, with determination, and with an unwavering belief in our potential. Let us not only dream about a better future, but actively create it, starting today. Let this be not just a call to action, but a call to becoming the best version of ourselves. Embrace this journey, for it is truly the most rewarding journey you will ever undertake. Thank you. There is perhaps no area of your life where self-discipline has a greater impact on your future than in your work. Yet, if you're like most people, from the moment you start in the morning and throughout the day, you're surrounded by people and events that draw you away from doing the things that are most important. However, it is through doing your most important tasks that you move onward and upward quickly and dependably in your career. A group of senior executives was asked, what are the most important qualities that a person would need to be promoted in your company? But these executives, 85% agreed that the most important qualities are, 1. The ability to set priorities and work on high-value tasks. And 2. The discipline to get the job done quickly and well. It seems that these two qualities are more helpful for career success than anything else a person could do. Diligent, disciplined, focused work will enable you to consistently and predictably get more done, get paid more, and get promoted faster throughout your career than the average person. Separating the relevant from the irrelevant, I mentioned the Pareto Principle, the 80 20 rule, several times in this book, and it applies again here. Fully 80% of the value of what you accomplish will come from 20% of the things you do. Your job then is to identify those top 20% of your tasks and then concentrate single-mindedly on doing them quickly and well. Chapter 13 discusses time management in detail, but for now, let's take a look at the flip side of good time management or time management. According to Robert Half International, the average employee wastes about 50% of his or her time on non-work related activities. 37% of work time is wasted on idle conversations on personal subjects with coworkers, conversations that have nothing we'd ever to do with the job at hand. The other 13% of wasted time is consumed by coming in late or leaving early, long lunches, coffee breaks, surfing the internet reading the newspaper, or conducting personal business during the day. Even worse, when people who waste a lot of time actually settle down and get to work, they spend too much time on low-value tasks and activities. As a result, they get very little done, which then causes them to feel that they are under continual pressure to get caught up. Unfortunately, when you waste time at work, your work does not go away. It continually builds like an avalanche. Deadlines come closer and closer, stress mounts up, until you finally force yourself to do the job, usually at the last minute, and then you often make expensive mistakes. Developing an excellent reputation is crucial. There's nothing that will bring you to the attention of people who can help you faster than for you to develop a reputation for hard, disciplined work every hour of every day. Average employees increase their income at only about 3% per year, which is just about the rate of inflation or cost of living increases. In other words, if you're an average employee, you're not really making any more money from year to year. Rather, you're just keeping up with your expenses. But the top 20% in most fields increase their income anywhere from 10 to 25% per year, which is also compounded year after year. The top 20% of people at work earn 80% of the money. The bottom 80% of employees have no choice but to share the 20% of the money that is left over. They must scramble for the crumbs that fall off the tables of the highly productive people in their fields. You can double your income. When I say to people in my seminars that you should set a goal to double your income in the months and years ahead, people react in different ways. Often at the break, someone will come up to me and say, you don't understand my company. There's no way that I could double my income in my current company. They simply would not pay me that amount of money. Having heard this before, I then ask them the critical question. Is there anyone at your company who earns twice as much as you do? The person that I'm talking to will always agree that yes, there are people in my company who earn two or three times as much as I do. I then make the key point. So, your company is quite willing to pay some people twice as much as they pay you. They're just not willing to pay you twice as much. Why is that? Then suddenly, the light goes on, and the individual realizes that it is not the company that is not willing to pay the money. It is the individual who is not contributing enough to be worth that additional money. The responsibility is on the individual, not the company. The law of three helps you to prioritize. When we coach entrepreneurs, executives, and business owners, we take them through an exercise designed to help them double their productivity, performance, and output within 12 months, 
sometimes even within 30 days. It's simple. Here's how it works. First, make a list of all the things you do in a week or a month. From the time you start work on Monday morning through to the end of the week. Write down everything, both small and large, including checking your email and returning phone calls. Then review this list and ask this key question. If I can only do one thing on this list all day long, which one task or activity contributes the most value to my company? As you go over your list, the correct answer will probably jump out at you. Whatever it is, put a circle around it. Then ask the second question. If I could only do two things on this list all day long, which would be the second task or activity? Review your list again and identify your second most important task in terms of contribution to your company. Finally, ask the question once more. If I could only do three things on this list all day long, what would be the third item? We call this the Law of Three. The Law of Three says that there are three primary things that you do that contribute 90% or more of your value to your company or organization. Your job is to identify those three critical tasks and then discipline yourself to do them all day long. All of your other minor tasks will be support tasks, complementary tasks, enjoyable tasks, or useless tasks. They will be little things that you've gotten into the habit of doing as a way of unconsciously avoiding the big, difficult, important tasks that can make a tremendous difference in your working career. Calculate your hourly rate. Another way for you to double your income is for you to use the hourly rate method of calculating your personal value and your time allocation. First, determine the amount that you earn each hour. You do this by dividing your annual income by the number 2000, which is roughly the number of hours that an entrepreneur or executive works each year in our society, 40 hours a week times 50 weeks a year. For example, if you earn $50,000 a year, divided by 2000, your hourly rate would be $25. If you earn $100,000 per year, divided by 2,000, your hourly rate would be $50. Whatever it is, from that moment onward, resolve to do only those things that pay you your hourly rate or better. Refuse to do those things that someone else can do at a lower hourly rate than you. Do not waste your time doing things of low value or no value while your other important tasks are building up. Get on the same page about what work is most important. Once you have made a list of all the results you feel you have been hired to accomplish and you have determined your three most important things that you do to justify your hourly rate, take your list of key activities to your boss and have your boss organize your job based on his or her priorities. You need to do this because you must be sure. Benjamin Trigo, co-founder of the Kepner Trigo Consulting Firm and author of The Rational Manager, once said, the very worst use of time is to do very well what need not be done at all. Yet it is amazing how many people are working hard on tasks that are of little or no value to their bosses. No matter how well you do an unimportant task, it doesn't help you. Even worse, working on low-value tasks keeps you from working on the most important things you could be doing. Hard work on the wrong job can actually sabotage your career. The happiest days you will have at work will be when you are working on those tasks that your boss considers to be the most important. The unhappiest days at work will be when you and your boss are at cross purposes and not getting along, primarily because you are not completing the jobs that are most important to him and to his career. Your goal is to be paid more and promoted faster. Your goal is to become one of the most valuable and highest paid people in your field. Your job is first to make yourself valuable and then to make yourself indispensable to your company. This requires, first and foremost, that you are always working on those tasks your boss considers most important. Work all the time you work. The key to doubling your productivity and output, and eventually your income, is to really work all the time you're at work. Simply put, when you work, work. Don't waste time, don't delay, and don't chat with coworkers or sit around drinking coffee. Don't read the newspaper or surf the internet. When you come into work in the morning, put your head down and then work all day long. The biggest time wasters in the world of work are other people who want to talk with you, distract you, delay you, and take up the time that you should be spending on high value tasks. When a time waster approaches you and says, do you have a minute to talk? You reply by saying, yes, but not now. Why don't we talk at lunchtime or after work? In the meantime, I had to get this job finished. I had to get back to work. When you tell people that you're under the gun, that you have to get a task finished for your boss, they will usually leave you alone. If you do this often enough, they will develop the habit of leaving you alone and instead find someone else with whom to waste time. 
Keep yourself motivated and focused by talking to yourself in a positive way. Your mantra from now on should be, back to work, back to work, back to work. Whenever you find yourself slowing down on a major task, begin repeating to yourself those magic words, back to work. Who works hardest? The secret survey. Imagine that an outside company is going to do a study of all the people who work in your organization. They're going to give each person a list of all the employees and ask them to rate their fellow employees in terms of who works the hardest, the second hardest, and so on. They're then going to give this list of people, organized from the hardest worker down to the laziest, to your superiors. This list is going to be used to determine who gets paid more and promoted faster than others. Now, imagine this survey is already being taken, but in secret. The fact is, in any organization, everyone knows who works harder than anyone else. Everyone knows who works less, who does not pull their weight. Everyone knows. It's not a secret at all. Result today that if a survey like this were to be taken one year from today, you would win the contest. Result today that you are going to develop a reputation for being the hardest working person in your business. This will do more to help you than almost anything else. When you are surrounded by time-wasting people and in situations that waste time, it takes tremendous self-discipline to work all the time you're at work. You must constantly fight against distractions and interruptions so that you can get back to work. Success Formula When I began my career working for a large company, I was the low man on the totem pole. Everyone had been there longer than me and was ahead of me in the company pecking order. Even though I was in my early 30s, I still had no idea how to play the game or what to do to get ahead in the cutthroat corporate competition that existed. Somewhat by accident, I stumbled onto the formula that made me successful. It was very simple. Whenever my boss gave me something to do, I did it immediately. Like a dog chasing after a thrown stick, I would immediately throw myself at the task, complete it, and hurry back to my boss with the finished job. Initially, he would smile and say something like, I didn't really need it done that quickly, but thank you for getting it done. I was caught up with my work. Instead of relaxing, I would go to my boss and say, I'm all caught up. I want more work to do. I want more responsibility. These words became my mantra. I want more responsibility. Again, my boss, who was preoccupied with an enormous number of projects, would say something like, okay, leave it with me, and I'll think about what else I can give you to do. Every day, like a broken record, I would go to my boss at the end of the day and say, I'm all caught up. I would like more responsibility. Bit by bit, he began to toss me tasks. He would give me a little task to do to keep me busy. Whatever it was, I would go out immediately, complete the task, and bring in the results. I would then say, I'm all caught up. I want more responsibility. Within six months, he began to see me as the go-to guy. Whenever he had something he needed done quickly, he passed by everyone else and gave it to me. He knew that whenever he asked what to do, I would do it quickly. Once, my boss asked me to fly to Reno to begin development work on a property that the company was purchasing. He told me I could go sometime in the next couple of weeks. Instead, I left the next morning. I went straight to the lawyer who was handling the transaction and then to the engineer who was in charge of the development work. I immediately sensed that something was seriously wrong with this land purchase. I didn't know what it was, but I went from person to person asking questions and gathering information. By the end of the day, just a few hours before this two million dollar transaction was set to close and the money would change hands forever, I found that we were about to be sold a piece of land that had no water and was therefore undevelopable because of complex laws and limited riparian rights. Dot. The property was a worthless piece of ground that could not be developed within the next hundred years. If we had proceeded with the purchase, we would have lost two million dollars. I immediately stopped the transaction, demanded that the lawyer cut me a certified check for the 250,000 deposit that was in his trust account, and flew home to my boss to tell him the story. As you can imagine, my boss was very happy with what I had done. From that day forward, I received more and more responsibilities. Within another year, I was running three divisions of the company and had a staff of 42 people in three cities. I later learned that my boss paid me more money than anyone else who ever worked for him, and he did so all on the basis of results and profitability. This is why, whenever people ask me how to succeed in business by really trying, I give them the same advice. Whatever your boss gives you to do, do it quickly and well. 
Then go and ask for more responsibility. And when you get it, do the job quickly and well until you get a reputation for being the person who does things fast. This will help you advance in your career more than any other reputation. Pay the price. Here is a simple three-part formula for success at work. Come in a little earlier, work a little harder, and stay a little later. This will move you so far ahead of your competitors that they will never catch up. Coming to work one hour earlier, before anyone else arrives. Use that time to plan and organize your day and get started on your most important tasks. Make sure that whenever your boss comes to work, you are always there working before he arrives. Second, work a little harder. Don't waste time. Don't chat with coworkers. Work through lunchtime so that you can get on top and stay on top of your main tasks and responsibilities. Third, work one hour later than your coworkers. If they leave at five o'clock, you leave at six. Use that extra time to complete your important tasks and get yourself organized for the following day. When you come in one hour earlier, work through lunch, and work one hour later, you add three full productive hours to your day because there are no interruptions when you work during these time periods. You'll actually accomplish two or three times as much as you would during your other work hours when you're constantly interrupted by other people in telephone calls. In fact, you can double or even triple your productivity, performance, and output by simply adding these three hours to your workday. The good news is that by coming in earlier and leaving later, you don't lose anything. You merely avoid the traffic tie-ups and slowdowns that most people suffer through on their ways to and from work. Use the 40 plus formula. This formula says that you can tell where you're going to be five years from now by looking at the number of hours that you put in today in excess of 40 hours per week. If all you do is put in the regular 40 hours that everyone else puts in, all you will do is survive. Your annual increases will be 3 or 4 percent. You will have a job, but your income increases will go up at the same rate as everyone else. It is when you begin to put in more than 40 hours that you give yourself an advantage over most of the other people in your company and your business. Make it a habit to do more than what you are paid for. Discipline yourself to put in more than you take out. Every hour that you work over 40 hours a week is an investment in your future success. The highest paid people in America, in every field, work 50 to 60 hours per week. The average self-made millionaire works 59 hours per week. This is equal to 5 12-hour days or 6 10-hour days. Most successful people, at the beginning of their careers, work 6 days a week, sometimes 7. Moreover, they worked all the time they were in work. They didn't waste time. They realized that in order to reap a great harvest later in their career, they sowed a lot of seeds in the springtime of their career. Finally, to succeed at work, you need to discipline yourself to look the part. Remember, birds of a feather flock together. When it comes to a presentation, this means that people like to promote others who look like them. Your bosses are very sensitive to the appearance of their staff. They like to promote people who they are proud to introduce to their friends and colleagues. Be sure that you dress and groom in such a way that your boss will be proud to take you out for lunch and introduce you to others as a representative of his or her company. Each morning before you go to work, look in the mirror and ask yourself, do I look like one of the top people in my field? If you don't, go back and change, and keep changing until you look like one of the top people in your business. Learn how to dress for success. Read books and articles, or ask others for advice. Look at the most successful people in your business and dress the way they do. Dress for the job two levels above your current job. Remember that fully 95% of the first impression you make on other people will be determined by your dress and grooming. Make sure that the first impression, and then the second and third impressions, are consistent with the message you want to send. Many people work their entire lives without realizing that by putting forward a little extra effort, working a little harder, and focusing on higher value tasks, they can become one of the most valuable people in their organizations. When you discipline yourself to continually increase the value of your contribution to your company, you put your career on the fast track and virtually guarantee yourself a wonderful future.